Hi everyone, this is your Tampa Bay real estate agent, Lance Moore, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the as-is purchase contract in Florida. What's the one thing that's completely different and unique about the as-is purchase contract in Florida compared to the regular purchase contract in Florida? And why I like this contract so much compared to the other contract. <music> All right, everyone. So this is the as is purchase contract agreement, the one that came out in 2017, which is our most recent that we have. Um, understand the audio is going to sound a little different here, and that's because I'm using two different speakers. So um, anyhow, just to let you know that. So the main thing that separates the as is purchase contract, and one reason why I like it so much is because it doesn't get clouded up. When we deal with the regular purchase agreement, and I'll go over that in a later video, what tends to happen is you agree to certain repairs up front. But then the problem is, is sometimes even though they seem to be very clear and they're in writing and they're in black and white well the problem with that is people interpret things different in the as is contract it isn't like that now when i write as is contracts and i write them for my clients i write them at um for more for the seller's convenience not to say that we're not going to ask for anything that needs to be repaired matter of fact when i call the listing agent i always let them know we're doing an as is contract but it's more for the seller's convenience so they know we're not going to nitpick them on a little on a lot of stuff so basically what you do is you fill in the um the contract this is the paragraph 12. 12 a is really the most important paragraph because it basically is like a get out of jail free card. Now, I, I do need to say something. I'm not an attorney. If you have legal questions on these contracts, please get a real estate attorney. So what I do is I'll come in here and, um, and, and the first thing you'll notice, the buyer shall have, and then there's so many days you could fill in, so many days after effective date in order to get an inspection. And I'll, a lot of times I'll leave that blank and just go with the 15 days. But if I'm in a multiple bid situation, then I'll usually be a little bit more aggressive. And a lot of agents will counter that if you leave it 15 days because most agents want 10 days. That's sort of normal in the Tampa market, though it can be a little hard. But I just did a contract a couple of days ago and I left it blank and the agent was fine with that. The seller was fine. Um, so anyhow, but then if you just read this over, it says, um, we'll start off um, right here. It says the third line down. If buyer determines in buyer's sole discretion that the property is not acceptable to buyer, buyer may terminate this contract by delivering written notice of such election to the seller prior to expiration of inspection period. So that's whatever the number of days you put in there, 10, 15, whatever it is. Um, and then it says, um, if buyer timely terminates his contract, the deposit paid shall be returned to the buyer. So it basically gives you a release. So what I do is I'll, I'll put whatever days, 10, 12, 15 days in here. I'll order the inspection first thing. The reason why I want the inspection so quick is let's say something comes up on here and then let's say something comes up on the HVAC. We're in the summer, it's not cooling properly. An air conditioned company might need to go in there so you don't want to take this to the very last day or you might have to extend this right here. And if the seller has a better offer than yours sitting on the table, they might not want to expend, um, extend it. So timing is always of the essence, but that's this really right here, paragraph 12a is the reason why I like this so much. Then if something does come up, if it is mechanical in nature, so roof, foundation, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, garbage disposal, dishwasher, stuff like this, we're always gonna ask for it to be repaired. If it's cosmetic, maybe, 
nail holes in the wall or a minor cosmetic crack on the tile, um, you know, then no. Because that's basically how our regular purchase contract reads. And then you could see right here in 12B, it just goes through the walkthrough inspection. 12C, the seller assist in, in cooperation on closing out different permits and then assignment of repairs and treatments. Now, some people, when, they're, when they get the repairs done by the seller, most of the time, they're, they just do fine with something in writing, the receipt that the repair has been made by someone who normally will do those repairs. If um, some people do want to send their inspector out, and that of course is always okay, but inspectors charge fees for going out. I don't want to speak for all of them, but they pretty much do. So you just want to make sure you have everything in writing and all your ducks are in a row. And if you have any questions about real estate, don't hesitate to give me a call. Let me know. Again, this contract is for Florida, so it's not for other states. I hope this helps you. Have a wonderful day.